Welcome to the Behavioral Sciences section of our Practice MCAT questions. In this video, I'm going to be going through questions 56 to 60. So first, I'll show you guys a question so that you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's question 56, 57, 58, 59, and 60. Now, let's go through the questions together. In question 56, it says a study is performed to evaluate for in utero effects of maternal medications with respect to intelligence of the offspring. It is found that certain medications have very strong adverse outcomes. This suggests that blank. So we are looking at in utero, so in the womb while a child or embryo is developing, of maternal medications, so medications that mothers take when they're pregnant with respect to intelligence and these medications have very strong adverse outcomes for intelligence. So what is that suggesting? This is suggesting that a drug can lead to some change in the eventual brain of the child that is born. So this is occurring because of a drug that was taken, not because of something that was passed on from the mother to the child. So option, well the options are either talking about hereditary or environmental influences, and in this case it's an environmental influence. So A is eliminated, it's saying hereditary influences can contribute largely to intelligence, but we can't suggest that from this study. You'd have to look at a different study. So we weren't even looking at hereditary influences. B is correct, environmental influences, that's what we were looking at. C is wrong because it's saying, once again, hereditary influences, and D is incorrect because it is saying that they're unrelated, but no, we are seeing a link and so we can make the suggestion that environmental influences do contribute to intelligence. In question 57, it says the rise in cost of healthcare has coincided with an increase in the number of uninsured Americans. Conflict theorists would suggest that blank. So we're talking about the rising cost of healthcare and then uninsured Americans, there's an increase in them. And what would conflict theorists say about this? So because of some inequality, that's what conflict theories really focus on. Because of some inequality in society, there are some groups that are finding it harder to pay for healthcare and they are now uninsured. Conflict theorists always look at some conflict arising between different groups, usually between the more powerful and wealthy classes and the lower classes in the socioeconomic scale. So that's what we're looking for. If it's something related to a different theory field, a different field or a different type of thinking, then it's not related to conflict theory, so we eliminate that answer. Option A is saying the status quo should be defended. That's incorrect because the status quo or the current state of affairs, the way things are, how society is set up, that's something that conflict theorists have a problem with. They don't want it to continue being like this where the rich get richer and then the poor stay poor or get even poorer. They don't want it like that. They want to change the status quo. They don't defend it. So that's incorrect. B is saying rising costs help the wealthy to exploit the poor. So this one does make sense. According to conflict theorists, we're saying that the poor are being exploited by the wealthy. So you're seeing a conflict between these different classes. That is something conflict theorists would suggest. Option C is saying the healthcare system promotes solidarity. That's incorrect. Solidarity kind of meaning like unification and it brings the different classes together for a common cause. No. If anything, it's creating a bigger divide. So once again, not something conflict theorists would say. And finally, option D is eliminated because it's saying cost is a symbol for tyranny, but things talking about symbolism, that falls under a different theory, symbolic interactionism and the symbolic theories, not conflict theory. So because of that, we eliminate D. In question 58, we're asked which of the following statements is correct regarding schizophrenia. So we're talking about this psychological disorder which one is correct? Option A is saying a single gene defect often explains the presence of schizophrenia. We can eliminate that answer because it's saying a single gene defect. No, it's usually much more complicated than this. It's not as simple as that. Option B is saying there's a very significant genetic component for the development of schizophrenia. Yes, a large part of it is genetic and we know that if somebody has someone in their family tree which had schizophrenia, that leads to a significant increase in the risk that this person will also get it. So yes, this has been established as a significant genetic component. 
Often C is acetylcholine is considered the most important neurotransmitter affected in this disorder, but no, that's incorrect. That would be dopamine. And option D is saying the abnormalities in schizophrenia are mostly chemical in nature rather than structural. That's incorrect because it's suggesting that um, they are not structural. They're mostly chemical. That's incorrect. We see both chemical and structural changes. So in both the white and the gray matter of the brain, you see some structural changes in schizophrenia patients. So that is an incorrect and false statement. Only B is the correct statement. In question 59, it says, a byproduct of group membership can mean individuals feeling anonymous or unidentifiable. For example, in military operations, soldiers who kill innocent bystanders argue that they were following orders and moreover, that they were going along with the actions of a group. What is the term for this process of anonymity in a group? So we're talking about anonymity in a group. What's the term for that? That's what we're looking for. And individuals in this case feel unidentifiable they say they're just following orders, going along with the actions of the group. So in this case, where people lose themselves, forget about their individual characteristics and what they would normally do, and start to follow the group, it's kind of mob mentality. That is option C, it's called de-individuation, or de-individualization. So both of those terms, they're talking about how people lose their sense of identity in a group. Option A, social facilitation, that's incorrect. This is a theory that if you have an audience and you're performing a certain action, Based on the action, the audience might help you and boost your performance, or they can negatively impair your performance so you perform worse. And social impairment, that can kind of be like, if we're talking more specifically about the part where we have an audience that impairs your performance, that's what that would be. Although social impairment isn't a term that's used very often. Usually we just say social facilitation for either way, either the positive or the negative effect of a group. But both of those can be eliminated. And option D, group polarization can also be eliminated. This is when you originally have some idea, or sorry, some like idea or belief, anything like that, and you believe in it to a given extent. But when you get into a group that shares this idea, then you are more polarized. For example, if we're talking politics, if you're maybe on the left side, then that's fine. You do it to a normal extent. But then when you get into a group, now it shifts even more to the left side, your political belief, because the people in your group are also believing in these same things and it's kind of like an echo chamber and they're also putting down the ideas of the other side and therefore you get more polarized to one side. It can happen either way and it can happen for a number of different ideas and beliefs, but that's what polarization is. That's not what's being described here, so we eliminate that answer. In question 60, it says, someone who has been review reviewing for a biology exam throughout the day may more readily recall certain technical terms which they have studied before. This may happen even if they have not yet re-encountered those terms in their current review session. This scenario best illustrates the example of what? So someone is reviewing for a biology exam, so they're learning biology terms in this day. They're doing it throughout the day, so it's for a while. They can more readily recall technically technical terms which I studied before even if they have not yet re-encountered those terms in this current review session so which concept are we talking about so in this case where you're kind of in a similar situation and you're studying some similar subject even though you're not focusing on something or trying to remember something which you learned before it can pop back up and more easily this is called priming so B would be the correct answer so priming, where you have some indicator which aids in the memory recall or aids in something. It, it can happen for a number of different factors. In this case, we're talking about recall of some information. So priming can help recall that if you're in a similar situation or you're studying a similar topic. A is incorrect, semantic memory. This is a part of your memory which relates to facts, knowledge you have about the world, not necessarily things that you've experienced yourself, but that's more broad and it's just talking about a type of memory. It's not really explaining the situation which is going on right now. Priming is a much better answer. C, echoic memory. This is your memory that relates to hearing and usually it lasts for a longer time than your visual memory because if you're staring at something you can for the most part see it longer and get that stimulus more so than something you hear because that is gone much faster. So your brain first hears this and then 
interprets it and figures out what that echoic signal that you got was, but it's not related to what's going on here. Finally, acoustic encoding is when you're trying to remember something by breaking down and focusing on the different sounds that the term has. So breaking down all the you know sounds in the word that you're trying to memorize, for example. But once again, that's not what's going on here. Only B is explaining what's going on. That's it for the questions in this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to check out our course. The link is right here as well as in that description. And if you like what you saw here, the course goes through a lot more things just like this where we're going through questions and explaining the answers, trying to help you develop that right type of thinking for the MCAT. And we also have lecture videos taught by medical students on all the different subjects that will be covered for the MCAT. So check that out. Here are some reviews for the course and our Instagram page. So make sure to follow us there as well. And finally, that's it for this video. You can subscribe here if you want to see more videos like this, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.